Happy Monday, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be talking about NS Rakestraw. We got an analyst, a big media, thinking that this guy could be a steal for the Lions. Does the Detroit Lions have the best offense and football? We're going to talk about it and show some stats a little bit there. PFF on the Detroit Lions offensive line. They have a very good ranking for them. We'll talk about that. Darius Slay, former cornerback, speaks on Matthew Stafford, Detroit Lions in the playoff game. Can't wait to talk about that. Yahoo Sports gives its record prediction for the Lions this year. Let's get this thing started. Before we get started on this video, throw in your record prediction in the comment section right now for the Lions. Do you think they go 12 wins, 11 wins, 17-0, and 0-17? And 0 Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We're going to start this off with Ennis Rakestraw and CBS Sports showing some love to him. Cody Benjamin said, Taron Arnold was the splash of the Lions 2024 draft, surprisingly sliding to Motown at the back of round one. Benjamin wrote, but Rakestraw's tenacious physicality could make him equally seamless fit for a Dan Campbell contender, especially depending on Carlton Davis' availability at the corner position. Rake Straw was high on my list as well when it comes to the NFL draft. I liked him quite a bit when we took when we took our great number one corner, Tarion Arnold, with the 24th pick after we traded up. I didn't think we'd get Rake Straw then at that point, but we did, and I was really happy with it. I think he's going to be really good. I don't know if he's going to be surprisingly good this year. The problem with Rake Straw is just there is a lot of players ahead of him right now, and he's he's been practicing at the nickel. You have a Meek Robertson, who I think is going to be started there. Brian Branch as well, but they could put him at safety wherever he is at. So it's going to be difficult for Rakestraw to have a significant impact unless there is a splur of injuries for the Detroit Lions. But I do love the pick. I think next year will be Rakestraw's year for Detroit. Not necessarily this year. We'll see him on the field. We'll see him on the field, but I think you're going to see him a lot more next year and compared to this year. That's just my taking right now. So, question for you: Will Ennis Rakestraw become a star in the NFL? S for star, A for average. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Next, we're going to be talking about the Lions' offense and how good it can be here and. Grant Gordon from NFL.com said, NFL research argues that head coach Dan Campbell's pride of the Lions offers the most statistically successful skilled players. In 2023, Lions became the only second team in NFL history to see four players produce 10-plus scrimmage touchdowns in a single season, according to the NFL research. That feat, which matched in 2013 with Denver Broncos, was accomplished by running backs David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, St. Brown, Sam Laporta, just continues on, too. Says these three players, St. Brown, 1,539 yards, Gibbs, 1,261, and Montgomery, 1,132, had 1,000-plus scrimmage yards, 10-plus touchdowns. The Lions were the only NFL team to have three such players, a mark tied for the most in a single season in league history, Per NFL research, these skilled players for the Lions is amazing. The Lions offense is amazing. And it just shows you right there that this is something that we haven't seen before. This offense, all these scrimmage yards, all these touchdowns, distributing the football to multiple skilled players. That is Ben Johnson and Jared Goff. Whether you like Jared Goff or not, he does find the open receiver. He does distribute the football quite evenly given with all the talent that he has at the skill position. He's doing the best that he could. I mean, you get Brock Wright, gets the ball. Everybody gets the ball. That's what he does. That's the Detroit Lions offense. Very good offense, if you ask me. So, question for you. Rank the Detroit Lions offense, 1 through 32. 1 being the best, 32 if you are a Bears fan. Continue on talking about the Detroit Lions offensive flame. We talk about the skill positions. They said it's best in the NFL, and, and last year is one of the best in history. Well, PFF loves Lions offensive line. 
They said they're ranked number one in the NFL. When healthy, the Lions offensive line was arguably the best unit in the NFL last season. Right tackle Panay Sewell was the league's highest graded offensive line, and, and Frank Ragnow earned the top spot among centers. Although the unit lost guard Jonah Jackson in free agency, the, the Rams signed veteran the Lions, not the Rams, signed veteran guard Kevin Zeitler, who ranked 15 in PFF among guards in 2023. The Lions offense is really good, starting as well as backups. Look at this right here. Taylor Decker, really good left tackle. He's undervalued. Panay Sewell, we talked about the best. Dan Skipper's our backup. Not too bad. Colby Soresdale is going to be playing tackle this year as well. And Giovanni Manu is a player, a project. Connor Galvin in there as well. The backup guards, really good. Kevin Zeitler, your starter. Grant Glasgow, your starter. Carry you. Keota Wosika. He's not bad as a backup. Christian Mahogany, he, he's not bad at all. Lions got good depth at offensive line. They got great starters at offensive line. And I do agree with PFF. The Detroit Lions has, has the best offensive line in the NFL. It's not just starters. It's backups as well. Last year, we had good starters. We had some issues with some backups, especially early on in the season when they're trying to see who would be the, ba- the backup. But Awusaka came in here, did good good work. And Christian Mahogany, who I love the draft. Lions are good at the backup position. So, question for you. What ranking do you give the Detroit Lions offensive line? One being the best, 32, if you're delusional. Let's continue on. Darius Slay spoke on the Detroit Lions here, and yeah, we're going to have some fun on this one. I know a lot of people's going to have fun on this one. He says, I'm the biggest fan of Stafford because I played with him for seven years, Slay said, when appearing on Greenlight with Chris Long. And I'm a fan of Detroit, man, too, as well. Only thing I did not like is when Detroit did and when they said they booed him coming out. Talking about the booing of Matthew Stafford. I don't know how many times we got to talk about this and why it is okay for the Lions to boo Matthew Stafford. First off, they weren't necessarily booing Stafford. It was more of they were showing love to Jared Goff. This stems from the trade, okay? Jared Goff did not demand to get traded. He was traded. Stafford asked to be traded. Stafford was proclaimed the greatest quarterback in NFL history, I feel like, when he went to the Rams. Everything was great about the Rams. They won a Super Bowl. Jared Goff went to the lowly Detroit Lions, the team that nobody likes, and he brought a team with the help of, uh, with, with this leadership and this regime to the NFC Championship game, okay? So when they were getting their first playoff game, and you could tell that this team was really good, the Lions fans at Ford Field were chanting Jared Goff, because Stafford demanded to be traded. He was thrown away. Jared Goff's our quarterback, and he's trying to win a playoff game with Dan Campbell and this this new team. This new look on life. That's why they chanted Jared Goff. That's why they booed Stafford, and that's why Jared Goff chants happen everywhere. It has nothing. The Jared Goff chant has nothing to do with Stafford, but Stafford's trying to beat Jared Goff and, and beat the team that he demanded to be traded from. That's why they booed Stafford, and that's why they cheered Jared Goff. If people cannot understand this, and I have nothing for you, I'm sorry, Darius Slay. I do not agree with you. I understand he's your friend, but you want to know what? Everybody should have expected that. Everybody should have expected the Stafford to get booed, okay? We like Stafford in Detroit, but we don't like him when he's playing us. And we don't like him when he's trying to beat us. And we definitely don't uh, don't want him when he's trying to take the Lions playoff game away. I mean, come on. This is the NFL. This is not holding hands elementary school. Stafford will get his rose and his love when he retires a Detroit Lion. He will. Or when he retires. If he de- retires a Ram, whatever. When he retires, he will get his love and he will be welcome back to Detroit. A lot of people will show him some love. But not when he's facing the Lions. Not when he's facing our team. I will not root for him. There is no way. I will boo anybody that is going against our team. That's just the facts of the matter of the situation. This is the NFL. This is not, oh, you know, we, well, Stafford, I hope he does beat us. And there's, If you hope Stafford beats us, I, I got nothing for you. Like, of course, they're going to boo him. 
Of course, all of that, it's going to continue. Lions fans want to win a Super Bowl. We haven't done it. We've watched everybody else do it. We want to do it. It's our time. So, question for you. Did the Lions fans mistreat Matthew Stafford? Why, if you believe so, and if you don't, let us know in the comments below. Yahoo Sports give its record prediction about the Detroit Lions. They said, with young stars emerging on both sides of the ball, the quarterback that was the best in the conference, one of the most underrated defensive lines in the league, offensive weapons everywhere, and one of the best coaching staffs in the league. The Detroit Lions enter 2024's favorite to win a tough division and make a deep playoff push. Quarterback Jared Goff has taken his game over the top, and he continues to further his game as this team could find themselves in the Super Bowl a record prediction of 12 and 5, and I do agree with good old Yahoo Sports here. I think 12 and 5 is a good record. If you want to go 11 wins too, I think that's fine. I think the Lions could have 11 wins this year, uh, you know, worse record than last year. That's just because their schedule is much tougher. The NFC North is much tougher. The Bears are better. The Packers are better. The Vikings, I don't know what they are, but those other teams are better. The NFC is strong, right? You got the 49ers. We, we got a tough schedule. We, we're facing a juggernaut of teams, but that will... We're a good team as well, and we're going to win a lot of those games. And so if the Lions go 11 wins, third test, I think they'll be better in this year than they were last year. I do. And, and so I a 12-win record prediction for Yahoo Sports. Can't argue with that. I like it a lot. Um, and we appreciate you. Folks, the NFL season is almost upon us. Training camp is almost upon us. We're going to be doing daily updates for training camp, literally in three weeks. We're going to be doing a daily update. That's when the NFL season... It's It never stops. Training camp is literally about three weeks away, so hit that notification bell as we get ready for a lot of Detroit Lions all the way through April, or all the way through May. With that said, folks, adios.